know, we've been doing some conversations around, you know, what does the hybrid, um, the hybrid workforce, you know, with people working partially remote, partially in the office, and every sort of government agency, company, everyone having different guidelines for what that's going to look like. Yeah, the human element is so important, right? Because the workforce, we're all humans. We all have different constraints on our life and the pandemics affected us in different ways. And everyone has their own different constraints. You know, perhaps it's a immunocompromised loved one or, um, you know, a, a pregnant spouse or, or any myriad of other things. Uh, and you need to be able to create an environment where if those people need to be in the office or have to be in the office, they feel safe, right? Because if you don't feel safe at work, you are not going to stay in that in that job. And that's gonna create, you know, that's gonna get into the sort of broader workforce challenges that a lot of companies and agencies are having right now. If you're not addressing that human element upfront and then applying standards and guidelines to how you manage your facilities around that, then your planning process won't be successful. I think the, the the really important thing right now is they've got to assess their buildings and sort of plan for the future based on what the workforce feedback is, right? So agencies have a workforce that's returned to the office with these hybrid schedules and remote work. And maybe you assume 50% of your workforce is going to report to the office on, on average on a given day. Um, so when you think about that and what it looks like in the current environment, rather than being at 50% capacity because 50% of your workforce is showing up, you know, that's kind of the old way of assessing your facility space, but you're going to need to make adjustments to make sure that there's space that allows for social distancing and proper airflow and whatever other considerations your particular agency has. And that may mean that 50% of your workforce actually uses 60 or 70 or 80% of your capacity, um, which is why it makes it really important that agencies establish that new baseline versus whatever standards they followed in the past. So once you've got all of that assessment data, you can implement a really robust planning process. I think the best way for anyone to go and get money is to have a good plan in place, right? And, you know, leverage strategic capital planning as a mechanism to prepare you for all of the actual construction you need to do. If you plan, you'll get more out of the money that you spend and you'll have a better sense of, you know, when am I going to have a spike in maintenance? Because, you know, a, a building that was built, you know, 30 years ago is on a different maintenance life cycle than a building that was built 10 years ago and those converge at some point in the future. Um, so I need extra money to support that. And if I have ongoing projects, when those come up, I don't want to have to stall on those. So that's where maybe I need to go get some extra money. So the, the, the folks that do the assessment of the facilities and the planning for the facilities, and then those who estimate the cost and ultimately procure the construction to support all of that assessment and planning and maintenance that's required from it aren't always well connected. And so the big thing that I think you have to do is you kind of have to go back to the drawing board and really follow that, that building life cycle and say, you know, again, going back to what are our guidelines and standards for what is a safe and usable facility in 2022, right? Feed that data into a strategic capital planning process and the tools that we have to support that and figure out what is your plan to both get people ready to come into the office now and to maintain those buildings long-term and potentially, if less of the workforce is coming back to the office, retire those buildings and save money. Or if your full workforce is coming back to the office, you may need to expand your building footprint because you need more space to support those people. And so when you look at it from a life cycle perspective that way, you know, you're, you're in a, it's really a unique opportunity. And, and Gordian's got all of the tools to be able to deliver across that life cycle and, and help agencies um, you know, be successful.